Good morning. How are y'all? Anybody need to stand up? All right, stand up real quick. Come on, I'm going to take a photo of all of you beautiful faces out there. Stand up, stand up, stand up. If you're standing up, you get in the picture. If you're not, you don't. Okay, ready on the count of three. Say green. One, two, three. Green. <laughs> oh, come on. One, two, three. Green. Oh, there we go. Hi, welcome everybody. I'm so <laughs> delighted to be here with you back where the Green Sports Alliance got started about 13 years ago. I'm Dean Ives, and I have the honor of facilitating a conversation with these incredible people up here who are going to tell us everything we need to know about athletes and artists, how to motivate them, engage them, get them to do all sorts of things for us, right? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Maybe. No, yes, no, no. maybe. We'll try. <laughs> we'll try. So it's becoming so much more commonplace for athletes and artists to leverage their platform to use their voices on the issues that they care deeply about. Some of those issues are very personal. Some of those issues are very inspirational for them. But how do they find their voice? How do they find a way to balance this tension that exists between taking a stand on an issue and also making sure that their public persona is not tarnished? It's a fine line. And I'll remember uh, a conversation, some of you here in the room may have been at uh, the closing ceremony at the Woodland Park Zoo for an organization that I used to run called Lonely Whale, where we had our Stop Sucking campaign. Was anybody in here at that closing ceremony? Nobody was. <laughs> but Russell Wilson showed up. Russell Wilson, who was the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks at the time, became our, our, our hero of the Stop Sucking campaign in Seattle. And I'll never forget the conversation we had with him and his team. It was about plastic straws, and he was so concerned, well, what if my child, what a future, is holding a juice box with a plastic straw out of it? Even though I care deeply about this issue, what do I do if that happens? That's a very real situation that a lot of athletes and artists deal with. And he almost didn't show up for the event. Five minutes to the closing ceremony, he showed up. So it's, you know, it's, it's not always easy working with talent, but these three really have the experience that we all need to learn from and to, uh, and, and to, to uh, lean into to help us understand how best to leverage and how best to support this talent. So um, what I'd love to do is, Lauren, I'd love to start with you and talk with us a little bit about what's unique about artists and athletes the position they hold and the platforms they have that allow them to take a stand and to make their voice known around issues. What's unique is the fact that simply being a music artist or an athlete puts them on a pedestal and it gives them a platform. And according to stats from 2022, fans are 164% more likely to buy a product than an athlete or music artist represents and sells. And it's also proven that brands that partner with athletes and music artists see a seven times return on their ad spend, 7x compared to if they were just doing it on their own. So I think what's very important to note here is that them having a platform means that they can make moves. They can help move the needle and they can sell. So if they can sell products, I'm very confident that they can also then move the needle when it comes to causes that they're passionate about. So we need to recognize that this unique platform gives all of us an opportunity to leverage them and lean in, and we need to use them in the right way to really speak to these causes. So we see these athletes and artists stand up, and maybe they're spokespeople for brands, for products. Um, maybe they're spokespeople for issues and organizations they care deeply about. And, and you're right, it does put them on a pedestal, right? It puts their persona out there as almost untouchable. But Rob and Lauren, in our pre-panel conversations, you both said something to me that really stuck with me and I think is so important for this audience to hear. You said that these individuals, first and foremost, are humans. Lauren, I want to start with you, and then Rob, I'd love to have you piggyback on the conversation of what did you mean by we have to humanize this conversation with athletes and artists? Talk with us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think what happens is that as these athletes and artists climb the ranks, we assume that 
they know everything that there is to know, whether it's about climate change, sustainability, financials. We attribute their success on the court, the field, or the stage, and we attribute the amount of money that they have in their bank account with education and all of these different areas. And we see it all the time where we expect these individuals to know what they're doing because they're amazing at their craft when the reality is they're simply human. Every single person in this room had something happen to them where we became passionate about why we're here. We didn't come out you know, born being passionate about this, and so we have to go back to that. We have to recognize that these individuals are human. They have the same insecurities, the same fears, the same things that we go through, and so I think it's our power, the power comes to us to really help them understand that we can go back to the basics and we can educate them to help them then take that power back and as a human speak to the things that they are passionate about. Rob, I'd love to turn it over to you. Um, in addition to being human, one of the things that's really unique, especially about musicians that you shared with me is they don't have a whole lot of self-confidence. You know, it's kind of why they're in the studio by themselves riffing on a guitar at 11 o'clock at night, two, three o'clock in the morning. So uh, you, you've also had some personal experiences yourself around sustainability, and, and I, I get the sense that uh, those really have come together and, and how you help artists really think about their, their platform, their position, the voice that they can have. So talk with us a little bit about how it works with your clients and helping them really come to the forefront and have a stand on an issue. Thanks. Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I couldn't agree more with the statement. And I think by nature, artists, and especially musicians, are super introverts. And they develop this alter ego when they're on stage and behind a mic or a guitar or a, a DJ turntable to have a, almost a false sense of confidence that they can put out there. Um, but they are human in the sense that they're insecure and worried and concerned and also have a team of people behind them publicists, managers, telling them to be cautious and, and potentially maybe not take on a controversial or an issue that could be politicized for them. So for them to really um, speak out and reach out on a cause or, or a brand or, or any aspect is, is really difficult. Um, I think that insecurity travels through and really what a lot of the goals and things that we're trying to do is enable them to have that confidence to speak out to to know that doing the right thing is okay and that they won't be penalized for it. And it's really a challenge for them and, and something that they need to step up to do, but they, they all want to do it. And when confronted with the question of wanting to do it, they resoundingly say, yes, I want to do this. I want to, I want to speak out on sustainability or, or any one of the aspects within under that umbrella, but, um, but they need that help and support to get there. And that's something that, that we're trying to do on a multiple different levels whether it's having um, things in the venue or on, you know, on their rider or just giving them the ability to do that and, and not feel afraid. And all artists aren't considered, they're not all equal to one another, right? So we talked about you know, the difference between Jack Johnson and Coldplay, Billie Eilish and uh, Lil Nas X. Like everybody is just so unique and so different. And I mean, I feel like Jack Johnson actually came out of the womb did I say that on stage? He was birthed with sustainability as his purpose in life, right? Probably same with Billie Eilish, right? Yeah. They just, they really have this natural and innate capability to talk about the issues that matter to them. As a, uh, and Denise, I'm gonna direct this to you, but as a member of the general public, I kind of hold this assumption that, gosh, if artists and athletes would just stand up and just make it known what they stand for, they can change the world. And I don't know if that's fair. Is that a fair statement to make? Is that held by artists and athletes themselves? Do they see themselves in that way? Some do, um, not everyone, but because they're human, they're like everyday citizens. So you're gonna have some people that are super passionate about something and then some that are, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, and a little more laid back on how they approach something. You know, But what I try to convey to all our clients is that you can, have a deeper connection with your fans and speak about something that you're passionate about. Um, and also that, you, you know, sports and entertainment as a whole has always been in a very unique position to move the needle. 
and this isn't something new. You know, you go back to Harry Belafonte or Muhammad Ali, these are people that you looked up to, you're inspired, and they use their platform to amplify their concerns and the concerns of their fans, because they're, you know, we're all humans, again. Um, so to make our clients feel more comfortable, I reiterate to them that they don't have to be the authority on all of these things, that they are merely in a position to shine the light on the resources, the tools, the real information, because there's a lot of misinformation out there, and relay that to their fans and ask the questions alongside their fans, make it seem very authentic, because if it doesn't seem authentic, then you're, you know, you, they can pinpoint that a mile away, and that's so important to, I think, artists and athletes, is, is being real and making it feel real. So um, if you find a cause that they're very passionate, they're personally touched by, then it's going to just come across as in a more real space, like with everyone. And Denise, you have some really unique tools that you provide yeah. to your clients. Yes. Um, so we talked a little bit about the writer, you know, I, and back when I led Lonely Well, there was a lot of conversations about, well, if we can just get it in the writer, if we could just get it in the writer, then we can, we can make sure that there's no plastic, no single-use plastics in the venues. But that's not really the case, right? And so can you talk with us about how your clients leverage the writers, and what's that conversation like with the venues themselves? And I know, Rob, you have some experience in this as well, but how how do athletes and how do artists, when they come into a venue, leverage tools that allow them to have a conversation? And what are you seeing in venues? How are they responding to that? Well, it depends on the level of the artist. So, you know, we rep Billie Eilish and Coldplay. They are enormous names. So they have a very large impact and they can kind of dictate what they want. But we also rep acts that play 500,000 capacity clubs. So if they're coming in, they're like, all right, let's go vegan. You know, they're like, eh, you know, you can also play down the street. So it really depends on their level. Um, you know, at Wasserman, we have a live music green touring writer that we provide to help them tour more sustainably. Um, and it addresses everything from eliminating plastics to um, reusable energy to composting, everything. And we encourage them to use that in, 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 in all of their shows. And again, depending on their level, they are, have more uh, ability to leverage that against uh, the venue. Um, but you know, also in the rider, we include, um, we did this climate conscious vendor database with Sound Future. So it's a first of its kind, kind of interactive, sustainable vendor database. So we're not only telling our artists and our athletes and everyone, hey, you know, uh, compost, but we're saying here's vendors that can help you reduce waste at your shows. Um, you can connect with them this way. So um, we try to prov provide as much information as we can. Uh, and some venues are super open to it, some aren't. The older venues that you know, are, very, are independent, it's harder for them to get on board, but when you get work with AEG or Live Nation, and they both have uh, like a green kind of uh, mission you know, to, on their own, they're more embracing of it. I can imagine how, I mean, I'm not an artist with even a million followers or an athlete that has been on a global stage, but I can imagine how important it is for them to be able to trust the source of information they're getting, mm -hmm. right? So if yeah. they're going to stand up and say climate change is real, which they do, they need to know that they've got a team standing behind them, right, that's giving them the right information and really helping to advise them so it keeps them safe. So Rob, you have a, a really big concert series that you've been working on, a really big platform that uh, not only your clients but others can really engage with. Can you talk a little bit about the reception that you have been receiving from artists and others for that series? Sure, we've been, um, really it kind of came out of COVID on a couple different levels, I think on, COVID was really a restart for, for our business and all businesses to really do it right this time and a second chance. And, um, you know, one of my personal mantras coming out of it was I'm going to do the little things as well as the big things. And, you know, whether it's our cup program at our venues or working with um, this climate awareness organization called Right Here, Right Now, who has really um, been a vehicle to 
frame climate crisis as a human rights issue and really pull in artists to present that message and support that message and in a way that, that they're giving back, but also in a way that is a vehicle for them um, right here, right now is supported and in association with the United Nations Human Rights and the Recording Academy and the Grammys folks. So there's that level of security that the artists can, can, can have through these events and, and concerts. Um, you know, we've done an event with the Lumineers and there's a summit and um, a couple other things that are get going, but really it's having that platform and that vehicle that they can work with and together to achieve this awareness and education. So, so two additional resources that everyone here can access to really help ensure that the information that you're using has already been vetted, it's already validated, it's backed up by credible sources. And then I, I think there's also, can, I want to come back to you about the human side of it. There's also the way in which we present ourselves, right, to athletes and to artists and to brands to help ensure and develop a sense of trust and credibility with one another. Can you talk, Lauren, about just your personal approach and how you, um, how you engage others in the conversation and, and how that really enables them to build that trust with you? And then I would, we're gonna do just a quick wrap-up question after that. Time flies so fast. <laughs> You know, Denise touched on it. It's all about authenticity. You know, I will say for me, everything changed in my life and in my own career when I decided to stop showing up as a version of myself that I thought people on the other side of the table needed or wanted me to be. And so that's what I do when I work with our athletes and music artists. I really take the time to get to know who they are, understand what it is that they actually are passionate about, and then really encourage them to lead with that. I think we live in this day and age where people try to build brands based on what they think is going to sell, based on what they think is sexy, and they get so far away from who those people really are. And so, as all of us here, we all want the same thing. Everyone wants to be known and seen and heard for who they really are, not for what people want us to be. And so I think that's what we need to do. That's what I lean in with our athletes and artists is taking that time to help them understand that what makes them unique actually is their niche. It's not just saying, oh, my niche is going to be this cause. It's no who you are. There's not a single other person in the world who has that. So empowering them to know that Number one, not everyone's going to like it, but when you lead with authenticity, you really can't go wrong. I mean, I think that's great advice for all of us, right? Be who you are, lean in with your personal experiences and what you stand for, and that opens the door for really authentic conversations with one another. So I'd love to start down here, Denise, with you. Um, as we wrap up this panel, um, quickly, what is the one piece of advice you would give somebody, and the same question for all three of you, the one piece of advice you would give to anybody in the audience as they're seeking to engage with athletes and artists around sustainability? Um, I guess for, for me, because you know, at Wall Street we were at musicians, athletes, and people always come for the big names. So they're always like, all right, can Sue Bird and Billy do this? And uh, sure, but you along with a million other people are asking them to do things. So. I would say expand and look to invest with um, celebrity at every level because you don't know who's going to be the Sue Bird of tomorrow, who's going to be the Billy of tomorrow. And that way you can grow authentically together. So I would say expand who you're speaking on, be open to other suggestions. There's a lot of people, artists and athletes that are very passionate that, you know, or at different levels. It's a great piece of advice. I love that. And and they have very unique audiences. Yes. Right? So they you all can do. reach a whole new group of people than exactly. you can with others. Okay, Lauren, your piece of advice. Well, I have to second what Denise said, and then on top of that, I would say let's educate and empower. 
We've seen so many different times where athletes and music artists have spoken out about what they are passionate about and they've received backlash. And there have been people who've said, go back to the court, go back to your stage and focus on what you're good at. So I think as us who are professionals and experts in this space, we can leverage what we know to educate them and then empower them to know how to use their voice in the right way. Because always remember, they're human, they have insecurities, they are all afraid of failure. So I think if we can play a role in that empowerment, their message can go a lot further. Great. And it's a journey, right? We're not going to get it right on the first go. Okay, Rob. Yeah, I think... Um Everyone in this room, we are really the people we've all been waiting for, and anything we can do to push this movement forward will, will benefit in a positive way for all of us and on all of our world. Did anybody else just get chills? We are the people we've been waiting for. I think that's a great way to end the panel. Please give a great round of applause to my fellow panelists. Thank you so much. <laughs>